Hi. This week I want to introduce you to the uh, a new type of uh, storage called as arrays. So in the past three weeks we learned about what variables are. We learned about um, how to do some operations on them. You know, add, subtract, multiply, divide, do the modulus. Then we looked at how to use conditional statements and then loops. So using the loop as an example, we were able to like process more than one item at a time, right? So let, let me go into the week four, week three, demo maybe nine. So here's a little demo, I think with the employees. So you can see here, um, this code is to like process the bonus of employees. We asked, you know, the user like how many employees they want. Um, that, that they want to like process the bonus for and then here with one variable for salary for saving the salary we were able to get that information multiple times we kept overwriting this one variable and then calculated uh, the bonus with one variable and we kept overwriting right it's inside the loop so this is where we are like making the code reusable we are not redundantly writing this code for how many ever employees we are just using the loop which has this condition exit condition the incremental operator and then we are using one variable right so this is where we are processing a collection so let me copy this for our new code and i'll explain why so here all what happens is anything to do with this salary or percent or bonus for a particular employee the processing gets over right here inside the loop there is no need for us to have each and every person's salary outside of this loop, okay? So here, if you were to write the salary and write the bonus, you will be writing it for the last person because we kept overwriting the data every time we set console.read line and saved it to the salary or percent or bonus, we were overwriting. So if you were to like write here, what is the salary and the bonus? and uh, the percent you will be getting that only for the last employee so let me just show you what i mean so if i run the code right now let's say we test this data for oh salary does not exist because it's here So this is called what what ha, what the error you are getting here is because of the scope. When you define a variable within the loop, it is only defined there and not outside. Okay. So I'm moving the scope outside. Double to int. Okay, so it's double. Int. Double. Okay, so number of employees, let's say I am entering three employees. So salary is that. Bonus percentage is 5%. Next person gets 45,000. Oh, 450,000. The bonus is going to be 1.0.15%. Third employee is making 34,000. He's getting a bonus of 0.1%. So look at this. So there are three employees here. The first one is 70,000. The second one is with 450,000. Third one is with 34,000. But outside the loop, the value of the um, salary is 34,000, which belongs to employee three. The bonus is 3,400, which belongs to employee three. What happened to the bonus of and the salary of employee one and two? They are gone because we used one variable and we have overwritten that value every time we looped and asked for this read line. Because of this assignment statement, we are overwriting this variable with this data because we are using an equal to. Okay. So what happens if you want to be able to use that employee, like, you know, the collection, right? You want to like save this information somewhere. 
and then you want to use it probably 10,000 lines below in the code somewhere, how would you, how would you use it? Here, because we just calculated and we showed that right away we are done, but what if we have to save it as a variable without repeating ourselves, right? So I just want you to like think about it really clearly as to why we are going to each and every of these new features before we start using it. First, we were using one employee, right? We had all of our code was doing for one employee. Then we said, okay, we want to do for multiple employees, but we don't want to create new, new variables every time. So we used one variable and kept overwriting it as long as the functionality was nothing crazy, right? Simple application, so this worked fine. What we have here worked fine. As soon as there is a requirement for us to actually reuse that value of this em all employees, if you want to like uh, be able to like retrieve the entered value for salary, bonus percentage, and bonus later on without losing the value, then this approach is not going to work. And that is where we go for arrays. So let me take this code and re-implement it using arrays. And I'll show you the difference. There's my week four demo one. So same code, right? So the same concept. So I just want you to think about the same concept. Do you want to know how many employees are there and you want to like loop through and do all of this, right? So I'm going to like push all this in comment so we can reuse what we want. Okay, so let's think about it for a second here. You know what, maybe, maybe this is too much. Maybe let me explain with a simple example. The same employee example. So we are saying now, we don't want to lose the value of the salary. We don't want these values to disappear. Okay, so so the other option would be to say int salary 1, int salary 2, int salary 3 and make them unique variables which is completely bad way to code because then you are like hard coding how many times you want the variables, right? You just want to like don't want to do that. So what is the other alternative? You want to use the same variable but then you have to be uh, having a way to use a collection of data in a variable instead of a single data. Now salary can have only one data. What if salary can hold multiple data at the same time? That is where arrays come in, okay? Arrays will hold a collection of similar data. So for example, if you want this to be an array, you say, I don't want an integer, I want an integer array with the two square brackets, okay? Every single uh, application is different, compiler is different. Let's see what this one says now. Okay, no error, that's a good thing. So what happens, this is called as array declaration. You are declaring an array. So right now you can assign values to it. So I'll show you like different ways of doing it. I'm going to run this, see there are no errors, so this is perfectly fine. So what happens is, here is, instead of giving one value as 70,000, we are giving three values. So this array knows that each array element is going to have one salary. The first array element will have this, second array, third array. So when I mean, what I mean by an array is like a apartment complex. If your variable is like a independent house, your array is like an apartment complex. It has the same address. But then there is a location for each and every house, 101, 102, 103, right? So, and then if you're on the second floor, it's 201, 202, 203, whatever it is. So an array is like an apartment complex. So it has the same address, right? The same name, salary, but each of that content will be saved in a different location inside that particular storage. So whenever you say int square brackets, 
it knows this is an apartment complex it even looks like an apartment complex see those two like a high rise so remember that an array is like an apartment complex so you are going to have um, multiple data stored in a single address that's what this means okay so you can locate each and every one of your items inside this array by saying this salary starts at zero oops so let's see what happens yeah First element is in salary position 0, second is in salary position 1, third is in salary position 2. So array elements start at position 0. So in order for you to get one individual element, you put the array notation which is the two square brackets and then inside in the middle, you say what number item do you want. So if you want only this guy, you would say 1. This is 2, this is 0. Okay, so this is how you access individual items from an array. Okay, so what if I want to change the value of one item? So I want salary 1 to be equal to 86,000. That's how you do it. You just overwrite only that value, not the entire array. You overwrite just one value like that so let's go and write salary one now there salary one is now it is six thousand let me just write all three so you can see nothing other than that one thing changed only one item changed see these three are the original array this is the modified array only the second item has changed item number one that is the second item in the list so this guy is uh, an apartment complex as in number zero this guy is as in number one this guy is as in number two and they have their own data so they have their own little world there and you can change the data so the thing you have to think about is like see array has very similar data all of them are similar data they are all sell holding salary of type integer that is what we are defining here we are saying this array is going to hold integer type data more than one integer type data okay okay so what if i want to not individually access like this but i want to be able to uh instead of writing like suppose i have like a hundred array items i don't want to like keep accessing it like this right so in that case, anytime we want to do repeated actions, instead we can use a for loop. So for int counter position equal to zero, position less than, here we know three, position plus plus. Which position do we want? Console dot right line, salary, and then the index is going to be what is varying here? 0, 1, 2. So this guy position is varying. So in, in here instead of that we will say position. Now let's see what happens. Okay. So what happens now? So here is where we individually wrote the array access. Here is where we change the array. Now we are using a for loop and iterating through the same items. So first time position is 0, so we get salary of 0. Second time salary of 1. Third time salary of 2. Fourth time what happens? Because the this condition, it doesn't meet this condition, it exits the loop. Okay, so this 3 bothers me, right? Is there any way to know how many items are inside the array? without hard coding it how do we avoid hard coding so if you want to avoid hard coding you have to know what is the length of the array so how do we find the length of the array thank god they have a method for it so salary dot uh, let's see 
let's see. dot length so i was just not sure if it's uppercase or lowercase it is l starts with uppercase so if the length of the array is defined is stored in a variable called length because length will be integer right we just say array name dot length now instead of this three we can use the array length so the length, so here, here's the trick, okay. Okay, here is the length, right? So the length of this array is 3, but the position starts from 0 to 2. So anytime you try to access, you should go from 0 to length minus 1. So here we go from 0 to length minus 1 because we are saying less than. If you want to say less than or equal to, you should say length minus 1. Now let's check that. So here length is 3 and then we use the length now, no hard coding. So it is going up till the, you can go either till length, less than length or less than or equal to length minus 1. So basic operations, these are some basic operations of an array. I'll see you in the next video.